If you travel for work or for pleasure, you can still be active in amateur radio. We're going to talk in this video about tools and techniques that you can use, resources available to you, planning activity, and also what you can do when you're back at your home to help others who are traveling. Stick around. Black one, black one. I travel a lot all over the United States. I take flights, road trips. They're very often quick trips and sometimes with little notice. I have been, while I'm traveling, still able to stay active in amateur radio. I've reported into radio nets, I've been able to go to club meetings, and I've been able to make some great connections. A quick shout out to Kate Hutton, K6HTN. I ran into her for the first time. It was on the air when I was uh, moving some messages that I wanted to send back home. I reported into a traffic net at the LAX section, and she was the net control operator. We were able to uh, make a connection on air, we exchanged some friendly email, and I started to run into her in Radio Relay International circles. I was watching Discovery Channel on TV some months later, and I saw her there. Didn't realize she was a seismologist uh, before she retired, so that was great to see her there. Then I ran into her still again when a friend of mine was taking a CW Ops course, and uh, she was the Elmer who was instructing my friend, so that was a great time. Amateur radio is at once a global community and a small world. For being able to stay active while you are traveling, you need to know some tools and techniques. First of all, you need to be realistic about your operation. You probably do not have room for HF. You're not going to be able to string a wire antenna from your hotel room, so you're going to need to make the most of VHF and UHF. Your most common case is going to be 2 meters and 70 centimeters. There's no need to try to get fancy because whether any of those other lesser used bands are available will depend on a lot of variables that are outside of your control. So go for what works the most in the most places. For antenna systems, you know, the mag mount antenna, we've shown a couple of quick shorts about that, and it does work. You can do that with the car and add a mag mount antenna. Or you can do it with uh, any place that you can get a ground plane. It'll work even in your office. And that includes when you're in the hotel. Sometimes you don't have anything more than an ironing board that is made of metal. You can sometimes stick a mag mount antenna on that, put it by a window or out on a balcony, and it's remarkably effective for ensuring that you have connectivity on 2 meters and 70 centimeters. As for your rigs, simple HT often will do the job, but if you need a little bit more power or you want to have some more options, you might want to use a mobile radio. You might bring your go kit. Now, if your go kit is designed so that you can just take it in a box, drop it in one place, and put it to work, that's great. In my case, I actually optimize for putting it into a case that can be moved about, and it takes me about two minutes to set it up once I get it into position. Don't forget, of course, that you have additional options. Winlink, Echolink, and IRLP are options that you might want to exercise. Sometimes that means having something on your computer, having something on your phone, now somebody might say, hey, that's not amateur radio because you're relying on internet. Well, that might well be true, but if the option is using some hybrid structure that involves amateur radio and also the internet service, well, what's the harm in that? Of course, you want to make sure that you do have, for emergency purposes, the ability to use RF only. Well, if you want to do that, that's what this is all about combining all of the different tools that are available to you, the techniques for being able to make them work to fit your particular situation. Resources that are available to you, of course, are going to include the ARRL if you're moving around in the United States. Go to the section that covers the territory that you're going to be going to or that you're going to be moving through. You can drill down, find the right section, find what's going on in that section, find the clubs, uh, find the ARIES organizations, find the traffic nets that are operating in that section. You'll be able to find links to websites and also to meetings, and that will help you to make sure that you're able to make a connection with the amateur operators and the community there. Also, don't forget about the repeater guides, uh, radio reference, these other sites that you can use to find where the repeaters are, 
what their affiliations are and what the purpose of the clubs that run those various facilities happen to be. Of course, once you have all of this, you want to make sure that you are planning your operation that's going to be on air. Check for the times, the frequencies, and the purposes of the various nets, as well as any of the in-person operations. What's the time? What's the location? What's the purpose? If you're going to be planning a trip far enough in advance, do you have the ability to reach out to somebody from the club and to coordinate your appearance? And of course, there's activity. If you're going to a party, you want to bring something. Are you going to bring outgoing messages if you're reporting into a traffic net? How about a brief report of what your club activity is? What if you just bring greetings from your club to the club that is running an operation that you join? Maybe you can give an invitation to coordinate training events between the two clubs. Whatever it is, try to be relevant. You don't want to bring bratwurst to a vegetarian party and be encouraging to the other operators there and be gracious as a guest. And finally, when you're not doing the traveling, you are at home, how are you going to help others who are traveling into your area? Well, first of all, make sure that your activity is easy to find. Make sure that the league has links to your section. Make sure that your section website links to what's going on in the various clubs inside of your section, the various ARIES and NTS organizations. Make sure that it's organized so that somebody who is planning to visit will be able to find it very easily and can plan their own activity. You also need to make sure that you're clear about what the purpose of your club is. Make sure that you know uh, when your meetings are going to be, have them clearly defined, make it very clear about what the schedule is, when the next meeting is. If they want to find the meeting in July, they should be able to get right to it. You want to also be sure to advertise what your frequencies are, what's your repeaters that you're using, uh, what tones are you using, all of that sort of thing. And then, of course, when you are hosting, that is, somebody is coming to visit your home area, make sure that you are there. You need to be on the net so that you can welcome them. You want to be encouraging and also be gracious. Welcome the visitors, send them back greetings for their clubs, and they will be sure to be able to report what kind of activity you're doing and hopefully inspiring them to engage in some of that as well. That's really all there is to it. Just a couple of steps that you need to keep in mind and you can be effective as an amateur radio operator even when you are on the road. Until next time, this is Radio KD8 TTE, out.